Welcome back to another Exposure Triangle episode. My name is Captain Giorgio and today we're going to be talking about shutter speed. Alright, let's get to it. So first of all, I just want to start off this video by saying that I've already spoken about the Exposure Triangle as a whole. You can check out that video right here or here. I figured I'd do a separate video for each exposure setting. So that's why I'm doing shutter speed all in this one video right now to help you out. Shutter speed lets your camera know how fast it should take the picture. Um, it exposes the sensor inside your camera for a certain amount of time. The shutter speed uh, is measured in fractions of a second. However, you can manipulate that to whole seconds, but we'll get back to that in a bit. So here we have the same image, but with two different shutter speed. Did you notice the difference? That's right, it's the motion blur. So in this low light photography, you can see that everything was slowed down, but you get this really cool effect where lines of light are just going all over the place. Whereas in this sharp photo, you can see that it was a very precise moment that the photographer took this picture. Uh, but with the aid of shutter speed, you're able to capture moments like these where it's like in the middle of a movement. <laughs> So as I've said before, shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. Let's talk more about that. When I change the dial in my camera, you'll see that I am changing my shutter speed. When I shoot at one fourth of a second, that just means I'm taking a photograph at a quarter of a second. Whereas if I change my shutter speed to one over one twenty fifth of a second, um, that just means that I'm shooting at one over one hundred and twenty fifth of a second, which is pretty quick. You'll see that now if I were to take uh, a photograph for each setting, uh, you'll see that the 1 over 125th of a second shutter speed gets the picture a lot faster and you're able to have some sharp motion blur there. Whereas if I shoot my photograph at 1 4th of a second, uh, things are a lot slower and a lot blurrier because of the sensor being more exposed to light. So you need to consider a lot when you're adjusting your shutter speed because yes, it can change the exposure of your image but if you're not careful, it can make your image come out blurry or or not. It all really just depends what you're going for. So if you have a fast moving subject, you might want to consider shooting at a higher shutter speed. Whereas if you have a subject that's just standing still, you know, yes, you can take advantage of shutter speed to, you know, give more light to your image. So now you see how important it is to take into consideration your shutter speed when you're taking a picture. But also remember that you also have the ISO and the aperture settings to play around with since they can also help you adjust with exposure. If you don't know what aperture and ISO is, check out these links that I'm going to post them right above me where we talk about those. So one more thing before we split, I actually want to talk about one more thing about shutter speed. So because we're living organisms, our muscles are always moving, right? So when you're taking pictures with a slow shutter speed, I've noticed that, you know, once you go below one over 60th of a second, you start seeing some subtle uh, motion blurs unintentionally because, you know, your hands are always, <laughs> your hands are always moving. So that's why if you're going to go below that, I would recommend having a tripod for that matter. And that wraps up shutter speed, everyone. And that concludes our three parts mini series for the exposure triangle. I hope you found this very useful. I was planning on going outside to give you guys live examples on how I use shutter speed, aperture, and ISO on a real life setting, but because the US is not really doing so hot right now, I figured I can do them all inside and provide examples with it. Perhaps later down the road when things cool off and things get a little better, perhaps I can provide some live footage and of it some life examples of me going around shooting using these three uh, exposure triangle settings to show you how it affects each of your photograph. I have tried something like this before, it's actually my first video here on this channel, but the audio is pretty bad, so I want to redo that with better audio. But overall, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to watch this video, I really do appreciate it. And I hope I was able to answer one of your questions. Please like if you like this video, sub if you found value, ring that bell to see more, you know. Please share this video with your friends who you think you'll, they'll find useful. Um, and let me know down in the comments if this, if this was any good, you know, what we'd like to see next. And with that, I'll leave you to it, you know. Stay safe, experiment with your settings, and remember to always stay creative, alright. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.